news is the first draft of history. It is immediate and takes place in real time. Legends take longer to develop and are sometimes based on myth. This Fox News series looks at the truth behind the legend. We are an independent nation, gentlemen. Now for us to tell the king. Our next objective is North Carolina. They must be crushed. They may have the numbers, but we have something to fight for. You have fought and triumphed together. Where is Lord Cornwallis? He is under the weather, sir. General Lincoln here will accept the sword. is on the verge of collapse because we are not truly one nation. Our current Congress can achieve nothing because every state, no matter how small, has an equal vote. We must have a Congress whose members are proportional and elected by direct vote. Yes. Yes. Of course, Virginia would propose such a plan. The larger states will hold all the power. We fought to preserve the sovereignty of the various states. Congress must remain as a single body with one representative per state. Yes, yes. I would rather have a monarch again than a tyranny of the states. to their limits by an oppressive empire. A determined group of rebels unites under the cause of liberty. Their quest for freedom will unify a people, ignite a revolution, and forge a new system of government. In time, these brave men and women will come to be known as the American Patriots. George Washington, the nation's foremost founding father and its first president, a battle-weary and debt-ridden general ready for retirement. But behind every president stands a man, and behind every legend lies the truth. Go on. He's expecting you. seized immediately in order to satisfy these debts. Delivering this news, it presses hard upon me, sir. Have I truly fallen this low that I no longer command the title of respect I once did? Or is that being reclaimed as well? Of course not, sir. I mean, Your Excellency. My apologies, General Washington. 
three years after the end of the Revolutionary War, the Articles of Confederation are simply not holding up. The founding document that precedes the Constitution does not provide a way for the states to work together on trade, borders, or national defense. It requires Congress to reach a unanimous vote to pass laws, and there is no president to enforce those laws. With the economy collapsing, it's clear the United States needs a stable federal government to unify it. Once again, George Washington will preside as the country takes on its next battle, states' rights versus a strong, centralized government. After the costly Revolutionary War, Americans are left with enormous debt, and not even George Washington is immune. Without a standard currency, national bank, or centralized government, the young nation is in economic freefall. Gold and silver only, no paper money. What do you mean? The U.S. government, under the Articles of Confederation, had borrowed a lot of money and had issued a lot of IOUs and had run the economy pretty poorly. Washington saw the American currency collapse, inflation spiral out of control to the point where it cost $150,000 to buy a horse. Get down, you Get down here! I need this horse! Some people in Britain predicted this would happen. If we can't defeat the Americans on the battlefield, okay, let's give them their independence and they'll probably fall apart on their own and they might very well fall back into our laps. Out of the chaos comes Daniel Shays, a Revolutionary War veteran who served bravely at Ticonderoga and Bunker Hill. Sir, are you all right? Now a farmer, like many of his countrymen, Shays faces bankruptcy and debtor's prison. Desperate, he decides to take radical action. How many of us have fought and died for freedom, only to have our own freedoms revoked? For bad debt? Unpaid taxes? Springfield, the armory. That is where we will find the freedom you all deserve. We will find here muskets, ammunition, cannon, and more. And then we will once again fight for freedom. They cannot take the rights from us that we so hard fought for. Daniel Shays and many veterans of the Revolutionary War have an uprising, leading a group of farmers, preventing judges and sheriffs from coming in to make foreclosures on their farms. <laughs> All right, men. Step lively. Armor's not far ahead. We'll have it by nightfall. <laughs> Shays plans to overthrow the Massachusetts government by marching his ragtag rebels to Springfield capturing the National Armory, where most of the military's weapons are manufactured and stored. Shays expects to find the armory undefended. The Continental Congress could not get the states to put up any money to support the troops. They had to actually ask the states to voluntarily provide soldiers the Massachusetts state legislature is able to raise a militia against Shays' rebellion. Men who once fought for freedom from Britain are now in open rebellion against their own government. The threat of a nation divided has America once again bracing for war.